All right, guys, I'm going to walk you through this house that me and my team were able to get off market. We've been doing construction for about two weeks now. I wanted to walk you through exactly what I'm going to do to each room and why I'm doing it. Maybe you guys could pick something up for your next flip. And if you guys get anything from this, as always, hit the like button, comment, subscribe, anything you can do to help the channel out. I appreciate it. Let's walk through this one. All right, we're standing at the front door right now. First thing I noticed when I walked in here, this, uh, if you remember the first video I did, this was all hardwood, but this was covered in my, uh, <clears throat> it was covered in a laminate. Unfortunately, this right where my hand is, it cuts off right there. This actually is hardwood, but unfortunately I can't save it. Um, so I decided to use, uh, I'm gonna do vinyl laminate planks. This is gonna be our kitchen. Um, I'm gonna try to keep the same pattern they had, you know, kind of like curve it around there. Um, so unfortunately I couldn't save this, but it's still gonna look good with the vinyl laminate planks. Um, <clears throat> and here I'm, ha I'm having to die, you know, sand, stain, everything, do something pretty simple. Uh, let's start with the kitchen. What I'm gonna do, um, High hats was a must. This is an older, this is an older house, so you're gonna to come to find out when you do these distressed properties that none of them are gonna have, uh, none of them are gonna have lights. Uh, that uh, most of the time not gonna have lights in the ceiling. Maybe a chandelier or two, but most of the time you're gonna see like a lot of stuff was lit by lamps. Kitchen, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. I'm gonna keep the exact same uh, footprint that was here. Just throwing up my, uh, this is my own stock of my uh, shaker white cabinets. Sinks right there. This is gonna be a pretty simple one. Um, like I said, I'm gonna put the cabinets first. Do your vinyl laminate floors after the cabinets. I can't stress that enough. If you ever have to change anything out or there's an issue, please, please listen. That's the only thing you take away from this video. It's cabinetry first, vinyl laminate planks to the cabinet. All right. Next thing is the, uh, this is the living room. Um, keeping this pretty basic. Uh, if you remember the original video, if you take a look at these walls, uh, you can see that they look a lot better. Uh, I, one thing I see a lot of contractors do is they immediately come in, they'll see like a bad wall or like a, they'll see like a piece of, uh, a piece of sheetrock that's got like dirt on it or like it's got, I don't know, who knows, you know, whatever they threw on the walls or if it's just completely dirty. That skim coating can do a lot. So I want you to consider what the price would be to rip out that piece of rock, uh, put it back up, tape, spackle, prime, paint. Like there's just so many other additional costs that they don't realize and that's how contractors blow out their budget. So I decided to skim coat where I needed to skim coat. As you can see, I didn't have to skim coat everything. Uh, these two walls were skim coated. That was new sheetrock that was put before we bought the place. But not everything needs to be skim coated. And here was just gonna be patching, you see? There's not everything, like there's a pretty perfect example. Like a lot of guys will walk in and they'll see, you know, the, you know, like the dirt on it. They're like, ah, it looks like shit. You know, I gotta, you know, I gotta replace it. No, not at all. Every painting, uh, kills, bin, all that stuff, like the, uh, it, it, does, it goes a long way. So that's one thing I want you guys to take out of there. Um, for the most part, I'm going to keep all the moldings. Uh, that's when I'm going to redo that molding because it was uh, kind of broken to shoot off. Not really sure how. Uh, this was the converted garage um, that I'm making this into another bedroom. I wasn't getting any heat in here, if you can see the vents. So I had one of my guys open up the wall because I wanted to see if there's any disconnects in any of the vents. But there wasn't, so I was trying to figure out why this place wasn't getting any, uh, wasn't getting any heat, and then uh, kind of followed all the duct work and realized that there needs to be two, there needs to be two uh, runs from the main chute. So yeah, obviously you can see the one chute that's coming this way. There's no reason for that to turn, you know, to turn left into the uh, converted garage. So also remember these older houses. None of this. Uh, None of these vents are going to be insulated. Uh, I'd like to make a suggestion. If you're going to keep these as a rental, I would insulate them because it loses a lot of their heat and you might get problems down the road. So if you're early in the construction and you're keeping it for a rental and you want to save yourself some headaches, I definitely suggest uh, doing the work now and just, you know, it's, it's quick. You can buy it from Home Depot and just wrap, you know, insulate them as much as you can. You don't got to go crazy, but I would do all the main vents. Uh, and here I'm going to be doing vinyl laminate. Same color I do in the... In the kitchen, I'm gonna do in here. I'm probably just gonna put carpet on the stairs. Um, I added a couple hi hats in here already. Also, another thing about the vinyl laminate floors, like the planks. If you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, I, I go to Lowe's when I get them. Uh, there is something called the bid room. I'm not really sure if it's called that at Lowe's, but if you buy over fifteen hundred dollars worth of uh, flooring, ask them to send it into the bid room. Basically, it, uh, they'll price they'll price out the flooring and you'll actually get it for a lot better deal. Um, uh, they, they match it somehow at the warehouse if you buy enough at once. So please look into that. It'll save you some good money. Uh, didn't put any hi-hats in the in the uh, hallway. I'm just gonna keep the uh, the one dome light. I don't gotta go crazy. 
here's our bathroom. Uh, I had a bunch of tile lying around at my old shop, so you know, no reason to waste it. I'm keeping this one as a rental, so it's like a, like a beige tile. Uh, like I said, I've said this in other videos before, use the same tiles in all of your flips, all of your rentals, because it's so easy to find boxes lying around. I didn't have to come out of pocket at all for this shower right here. All left over, it's a uh, doll tile, and it's the uh, three by six beveled pieces. I love them, they look great. I use them in kitchens, bathrooms, whatever. Um, and here, just, you know, just did some patching. Uh, gonna replace the fixtures and get that going. Um, okay, these are just these little bedrooms. Didn't have to do much. Like I said, we're gonna sand the floors. We added hi-hats in each room. Um, I'm gonna do like a short on this, but I want you guys to understand how crucial it is to add hi-hats. Um, whether you're flipping it, keeping it, whatever, it's not that big of a deal. Look, these are all my cuts, okay? Uh, I'm saving money, you know, electricians are getting $250, $300 to put a hi-hat in. I'm not spending $600 a room, okay? So all I'm doing is I'm cutting open a hole, right? You get your first, well, this is the original switch that was in here that worked one of the outlets. Uh, listen, I'm not saying that any Joe Schmo can come in here and figure all this out, but YouTube did a lot for me. Most of the stuff I learned about electric and plumbing was off YouTube. So look, these are all my cuts. They don't have to be perfect. All I do is I channel it up. I throw in my first hi-hat. Once the first one's in, you don't gotta channel anything. You can usually just drop it in as long as the bait, depending on which way the beams are running. And then you don't, I, I, honestly what I would do if I didn't have guys that were working for me and I was just starting out, I watch a quick little 30 second YouTube short on how to quickly patch all this and I'm done, all right? So don't be afraid of having to add, you know, add, add hi-hats. It can get real cheap if you put in the work. Um, this is going to be the master bedroom. Uh, nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Like I said, I'm skin coating pretty much everything in here. There's just a few walls that I just kept, you know, that I'm probably just not going to bother. But uh, when you think about the cost difference when it comes to a piece of sheetrock versus a skin coat, uh, if you bulk order your your buckets of spackle, or if you have an account with Sharon Williams or Benjamin Moore, I mean, I'm getting a bucket of spackle like a like the the five gallon bucket of spackle. I think I'm getting for around 13 bucks now. So one gallon, one five gallon bucket can probably do two rooms. So you're talking about, you know, guys come in here, they oh, I, I get nervous when I buy these flips because I, you know, what if I blow out the budget? I'm using hard money. I'm like, yeah, this is a perfect example. Is like the guys will see these, these bad walls and they're like, oh, I'm just gonna re sheetrock it. And you don't realize how much that adds up. I mean, I'm not sure what a, what a board of sheetrock's going for right now. But if you're telling me that the that the that the walls are decent, there's you know there's really there's no soft spot and they're, and they're structurally okay, you're telling me a twelve gallon five uh, I mean uh, a twelve dollar five gallon bucket of spackle can do two rooms. Oh, you got to look. Um, do they have it still sitting here? Uh, I I don't see it. But they literally you take a painting pole and you just roll it on. Go get like a real cheap, uh, you know, one of the real cheap rollers and you just dip it into the bucket of spackle and you just roll it on. You have somebody. I usually I'll, either I'll do it or I'll have another guy behind the guy that's rolling it with one of your one of the big spatulas and that's it. That's how you smooth it out. So, you know, just uh, try try to think about your cost difference. You know, I'm not telling you to go super cheap all the time. Listen, if there's soft spots in the sheetrock or if there's something wrong with it, yeah, replace it. I'm not saying you have to you know you have to do that, but there's a lot of times guys just waste money for no reason. This is a perfect example too. Like this was all. Um, it was like textured. I don't know if you can tell from all the way up there, but it was like that weird textured paint on the walls. And I'm like, ah, I didn't know if I should rip it down, if I should add like a quarter inch, you know, boards to it. And uh, my spackle guy was like, no, nah. he goes, listen, I'll just put it on extra heavy. You know, he had to do two coats in here. So this was probably like a full backle and uh, full, full bucket of spackle in itself. But you know, it came out real nice. So let's put it down. So like I said, I'm keeping this one as a rental. Um, down here, this is going to be a little unconventional what I'm doing because I'm actually going to be running a daycare out of this house. Uh, it's going to be a spot for my wife's family, and we're also going to try to get a little family business going down here. So I didn't set this up as if I was renting it. If I did, I would probably end up walling off, you know, I would probably have it. Could, I could put this into a two bedroom pretty easily. I would probably make this a small hallway where we're walking now, and I would probably do two bedrooms back to back. But... Because I'm not doing that, let me show you guys exactly how I'm breaking this up um, for uh, my plans of a daycare. So this is all gonna be a common room. Uh, I'm not gonna go into like the uh, exact details of like what's gonna be where, my wife's in charge of all that, but let's just talk about how I'm setting everything up down here. So 
It actually wasn't too bad down here. If you remember the first video when I walked through here, uh, this, uh, the, the only problem with the basement was everything needed to be skin coated. The walls were just, everything was super uneven. It was just a pain in the neck. I wasn't replacing sheetrock. It wasn't worth it. So this probably took, probably cost me about two buckets, maybe three buckets and got all the walls done. It came out real nice. Um, now there is central HVAC down here, but it's forced hot air from an old furnace. Don't want to do that down here. Sometimes that forced hot air can be real dry and it just, I don't know, not really my, my cup of tea for, for a daycare. I just didn't, I didn't want it to become like super like dry heat down here. So what I did was I had my plumber add a couple lengths of baseboard and we put them on the inside walls because this is all open behind us. Uh, we'll get to that in a second and I'm going to end up be putting a mini split right on that wall and have the unit right outside next to the egress and then the mini split will also that's another thing when it comes to putting in mini splits try to figure out which way like depending on how you're setting this up whether it's going to be for a rental or whatever try to figure out which way the airflow is going to go so in this case i want it on this wall because it's going to blow into the main part of the area and then it's going to also hit into the kitchen a little bit as well but i'll show you that um so when we first walked in and i saw the back i realized the back was just there was just so much room I'm like, you know what? I'd really love to put like a small washer and dryer room, especially for, you know, my wife's family upstairs, you know, when the daycare is not being ran or just even whenever I'd like to add a spot to put a washer and dryer. So there was just so much wasted space in here and I'm not keeping this, um, this old furnace anyway, even if I did, I could put the wall here and this is a great little area for a washer and dryer, whether it's a top down, but I'm actually going to be pushing that back to the back wall. I'm going to make this pretty, pretty big in here. So you're going to walk in, it's going to be a washer and dryer to your right and left. Okay. So this is the, uh, I'm a big fan of Stain Master. I use Stain Master for almost all my jobs. I cheaped out on one flip that I did maybe, I think I want to say like a year ago now. I cheaped out on one and I went for like a real inexpensive floor and I did it on a, um, on a slab. And I'm telling you, it was the worst thing I ever did. You could feel it as you walked. It just felt cheap. I mean, the place ended up selling with no issue. Um, but I just, I don't know, as a flipper, like I don't, I don't want to be one of those cheap guys. If someone's buying one of my houses, I want to be proud of my work. I don't want them thinking that I'm some, you know, some low life that's barely spending any money. So trust me, stay nice. You can never go wrong. It's a few dollars more. Um, not, not per square foot. Just, it's a little bit more expensive than the cheap stuff, but I get this from Lowe's. I run it through the bid room and it ends up paying dividends in the end. Uh, is this white still working here? Yeah. So this is the bathroom. Uh, this is going to be the last thing that I remodel. So it looks like, you know, kind of rough. But if I can clean this tile and, you know, clean it up pretty well and it looks okay, I might just keep the tile. Tub I'm going to spray. I might just update the uh, shower fixtures. I'm going to get a new toilet. Um, so this was the old kitchen, if you remember from the first video. Let me step back a little bit. Um, you can see that I raised this. So self-leveling really, really goes a long way in a lot of these houses. So don't be afraid to get some self-leveler. It was so bad in here that uh, it, there was no way to cheat left or right. Like you, you walk around and you felt it, it was terrible. So I had my guys put down a two by four and it probably took me about eight bags of self-leveling cement and leveled it out, let it dry. And now absolutely perfect. Listen, I wouldn't suggest doing this in like, you know, if you have like a, like a huge area like this and the whole thing is bad, yeah, you might need to, you might need to think carpet because um, that's originally what they had was carpet. But this was pretty low for the most part. Like I could cheat a little bit here and there. But if your whole section is real bad and different levels and different spots, then trust me, it's not worth it. But if you have a small area like this where I can afford to do it and still keep my seven foot ceiling height, then yeah, this is, uh, I suggest doing this. And I'll just put like a saddle right here for the transition and that's it. Um, like I said, this was the, this was the entrance to, I, unfortunately, I don't think I have a light in here. Yeah, it's, I don't have a light in here, but you know, there's just so much room. Like you can see, they put like that space back there. I'll get in here a little bit. Um, water heater is fairly new, but I'm ending up changing it anyway, because I have another one that's uh, in better condition. I'm uh, moving the furnace back. Well, I'm not doing a furnace again. I'm going to be doing a boiler, but moving everything back here to open up this laundry room over here. That's the crawl space in the back that they put, which is good. I can, you know, store stuff. I can get to the trap, uh, which is nice. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully I showed you all the little tips that, um, that comes into when you look at, you know, saving money and <clears throat> saving money. And, you know, like it's just a lot of guys blow out budgets because they just 
they, either they don't know things or they're afraid to, to, you know, use a little innovation, you know, like this, I'll give you an example. This one I'm keeping as a rental. Uh, I use private money on 99.9% .9 of my flips, uh, even my rentals, you know, I'll, I'll refi out of them, pay the pay private money back. But this one, I'm using my own money. Uh, had a HELOC from another property that I'm using as well. So this one's all my own money. I'm telling you, when you're using your own money, you definitely learn new tricks and tips and, uh, on how to save some money. So, uh, you know, yeah, listen, if you guys, if there's something you wanted me to go in depth on or something I missed or something for the next video, just, you know, leave a comment in the uh, comment section and uh, maybe I can try to go into it on the next video. But as usual, like, comment, subscribe, help my channel out a little bit and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.